Hi, I'm Steve Goodman and on Practical 365 today, we're looking at a new feature that has just launched and it's going to make streaming your meetings. If you need to do webinars to platforms like YouTube and other places, very, very easy. Now, if you've looked on the YouTube channel before or on practical365.com, you've probably seen our posts on how you can do this with NDI. Now, this new technology is from the same team at Microsoft, but it is very different. And I think it's kind of like the, the foundation for how loads of cool things are probably going to work in the future. So it's one to pay attention to, but it's also something that you can use right now, today. And we're going to have a look at it well, right away. So inside Teams, uh, this is going to be something that you can add to meetings, but you've got to do some setup first. So using Teams PowerShell as an administrator, I need to go and make some changes. So what we have to do is we have to edit the Teams meeting policies. Now, once we do that, we can enable the live streaming mode. So I can check whether I've already enabled it. And I have because um, I want to make sure that we can do the demo. Uh, and I'm going to go and get CS Teams meeting policy and I'm going to have a look and see whether my policies do have this in. So I'm going to go identity and live streaming mode. That's going to pull back all of the team's meeting policies and show us which ones are on or off. And you'll see global, that's the one that applies to me as a user, is on. Uh, and if I want to go and set another of these to on, then all I need to do is go and make a change to it. So identity, test one. So if you're a user and you want to use this feature and you're about to ask IT, it is quite easy. So for example, if you want to enable one person to have it, create a policy, obviously you want other settings to match, and then you can add that person to the policy. So in this policy test one, I'm going to go, go and put live streaming mode on. And in theory, within about an hour or so, that will take effect in the client and they'll be able to use it. Now, the cool thing about this live streaming is it's not going to happen from your client. So if we're using NDI out, which is that feature where we can take the streams locally and put them into something like OBS or, or similar, uh, or the hardware out where I cable out HDMI cable into some sort of broadcast console, we don't need any of that. In fact... We don't even need the computer to be on while we're streaming. We could switch over to something else. And we'll try that as well during the meeting. But we do need to be the organizer of it. But the clever thing about it is the configuration is done by us as a user when we set up a Teams meeting. But the streaming goes from Microsoft. So Microsoft's data center is going to pick up the video and then it, or the screen share or whatever we're doing. And then it's going to send it to somewhere like YouTube for us. So bit of internet problems if you're the organizer it's not going to matter you know this is like a better version of something like StreamYard. this is the first version of it though so we'll talk about some of the limitations but i'm assured microsoft are going to be building on this a lot in the future and it literally came out today like the 31st of march so they just managed to sneak it in as promised into march as well so let's Let's get this working. There's a couple of bits that we need to do first of all. So if we want to stream to something, well, then we need a target. So RTMP is it's an older protocol. It's used a lot with things like YouTube. There's newer protocols that are better. Um, however, it's common. It works with anything. You know, I could send a stream into a CCTV camera server. I, In fact, uh, a lot of the CCTV cameras, they send using that protocol. They have done for years. A lot of the streaming kit that you can buy on the market, all of that uses RTMP. It is the lowest common denominator, but it's so common for live streams that it's almost unavoidable. There's new, more efficient protocols, um, but this is this is absolutely good enough, and it accounts for really good quality as well. All of the services like Restream.io that can sit in the middle and compose your video, they all use this technology as well. Live events platforms, if you're going to stream to those, they use it. All of that stuff that we do with the OBS for live events, it's, it's basically that as a service. So I'm going to set up a live stream. So I am in the control room. 
Um, I'm going to use streaming software, Teams as my streaming software. And here we go. There we go. Next, next, next. Now, what we need is to be able to send some of these details. So as you can see, YouTube, which is where most people are going to stream to, you could get to Twitch or whatever, um, has got that RTMP URL. So we'll need that and then we'll need a key. So in Teams, I need to actually paste that into somewhere. So I'll copy that to start with. And then I'm going to get rid of this. It doesn't matter if you see it. And then I'll get that, that key as well. Um, actually, notepad. I don't need to do that, do I? All right. So I've got my Teams meeting. Already set one up. I've always got a Teams meeting, actually. So I'm going to join this one. Um, oh, hello. There I am. That's actually me. Look at that. Two cameras in one place or one camera in two places. Uh, so the, this is like one of the, the killer features, really. All the background effects, all the background blur. You know, whenever you use or well, if your marketing team or your marketing team are using something like StreamYard, not that it's StreamYard bad. And then your folks come along to the meeting and they're like, oh, all my washing's behind me. I've lost all my cool stuff. You know, I've lost my favorite background. Uh, I've not got a certified device. My lighting's not great anymore. It's you know straight away we've got the we've got the background. We look good for our meeting. So I'm going to join this, as you do. Uh, I'm inside my meeting. Hello, and I'm going to go to more. Teams can't hear you. No, that's because it's my headset. Um, don't want to be too clever and try and send the video into all these places. So I'm going to add an app, uh, and I'm going to search. for or the new custom streaming app. This is the bit that we have to add, all right? This is the bit that's gonna do this for us. So I add this, and you've got to add this to the meeting. Um, all right, so welcome, we're glad you're here. And we've added this. Now, on the side, this is gonna allow us to enter those details straight from YouTube. So if I pop that on the screen here, yeah. then we've got our stream URL, paste that in. And I'll make that available, my key. Again, I'm going to kill that off. You, you don't need that. Uh, and I'm ready to go, right? I can start streaming. That's that's it. That's surprisingly easy. Now, ignore that flashing on the screen. That's OBS, which is the thing recording this view for YouTube. Um, it So I've really got two cameras, right? Uh, so... Confirm streaming meeting content. We'll need access to, to share to an external platform for the duration of this meeting. Okay. Allow. So, right. Genuinely, this is the first time I've ever tried this. If it works, I'm going to be amazed. Start streaming. So I don't know how long this is going to take. Streaming is turned on. <gasps> nice. Am I going to appear now there's going to be a delay the person speaking isn't sharing video i am oh hold on audio now what you need to know about this version one the way this works is the active speaker is going to be the person who is shown on the stream so if i stick this on and make sure my mic is on hello there we go Active speaker. That's why I didn't show up. So as the active speaker changes, then that's who will be shown on the stream. Oh, that is so cool. That There is a delay, but there always will be. That's how these platforms work. Um, we can have a look at the analytics, stream, health, the qualities going in. This is all coming in from the Microsoft data centers. It is so, so neat. Oh, I'm I'm genuinely impressed. I know it's quite straightforward and simple, but that's the good thing about it, right? Um, oh, you're, there's my video, and there's my video. There it is. All right, so I am gonna join this from a mobile device. So, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's um, let's make this a bit smaller and out of the way because we've got a lot of stuff going on here. So. So I'm going to join the meeting from my phone. And because I've got a bit of common sense, I'm going to switch the headset off. 
otherwise we're going to be coming into too many places. Now, once I unmute and I switch on my video, then hello. All right. What should happen is you can see my video here. I'm obviously the active speaker. That line in Teams is showing it. And you can see a few seconds later that comes up. Now, of course, if we were using that NDI feature or we were doing anything locally, then what would happen if I press this? Leave. All right. Then having left, and just to make sure you can see this is different, terrible lighting. All right. So you, so you see I've left the meeting. I'm not in it anymore. Um, but the stream doesn't stop. At least I hope. Oh, that, there we are. Perfect. Right. So that that's pretty good. Right. So you as an organizer, you don't need to actually stay around. Your internet breaks, you reboot your computer. You're absolutely fine. You're sorted. Right. Join again. Maybe. Yeah, we'll do that. Join now. And we're back in the room and I've got myself on mute and put the headset on again. And what we expect to happen is as soon as I start talking here, it says dongle connected in my eardrums, <laughs> then it's going to switch whoever's talking. So I should now be live on the screen there. And I've left the meeting. So all of that stuff, I've gone, I've been on mute and I'm back. So I'm running a Teams meeting, yeah? I've got people in it. Um, I'll rejoin. I'll rejoin. But I'll keep this as simple as possible. Now, if I go on to this and I say, right, I'm going to disable the mic for this person. So I don't want them, I don't, you know, it's not quite the managed meetings yet. Um, but I like a webinar, for example, uh, where you can mute particular people. Now, this is how, of course, you could manage it. So you want to make sure that you've got a bit of control over um, who's speaking and when then the best thing to do is only allow people to speak at a certain time. Um, so you don't have somebody coughing or going off mute and then and then becoming live on, on the screen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, any of those little flashes that you see, that is really down to OBS. Uh, because if I drag this across, look at this for inception. Um, I'm sending out um, that into Teams. So I can use one camera while I do this. So that's just... Just need a bigger computer um, to record these kind of things live. Ah, oh, fundamentally though, this is absolutely brilliant though. Now, StreamYard and tools like that do give us the ability to add things into the stream. So if you're using StreamYard, you can compose where people show on the screen. Uh, so you can have them left and right. Um, if you're doing something like sharing content, then you can do, choose where things show as well. Uh, this is one thing at a time, which, you know, might not be what you want. So let's, let, let's try and be smart and see what happens if we do this. All right. Um, so I'm going to attempt to send my presenter mode here. Now, what I should see here, I'm sharing that content. As you can see, it's not bringing everything across as is. So you can see, it's not doing the full modes that are available. It's just sending that screen share straight to it. So all of those things that you might want to do, you just simply might not be able to do yet. You could do PowerPoint Cameo if you wanted. Um, that's a really cool feature, uh, but I don't think you're going to, you know, frankly. Um, all right, if I stop sharing, then I'm going to be back in the room. Uh, now, this is going to change over time. What Microsoft are going to do with this, and of course, this is the important thing, right? Microsoft haven't finished what they're doing with this. Now, what you will see is more features coming. At the moment, the output that you're getting, it's going to be 720p, which is good for talking heads, discussions, panels, and stuff like that. If you were perhaps doing, as we do, uh, a screen share of... PowerShell coding and all that sort of stuff, very, very small writing and content, then it might not show so well. But a lot of the streams, a lot of the webinars, a lot of that sort of content, it, it's all 720p anyway. So it's not necessarily a bad thing um, because people aren't going to watch it full screen, you know, most of the time um, or on a massive projector screen. Uh, the 
the, the, the composing a different layout. Now, if you want to do that, there are ways. The easiest way to do that is to have a platform that sits in the middle. So if you're using something like Restream.io, then you can do the really smart thing of getting everybody in through Teams so they can use the virtual backgrounds, you know, because there's definitely something to be said for for doing this. I mean, that is, that, that 720p, there we go. You can see the quality there. That's, let's double check, yes, you can see me talking. But that, that's the quality that's, that Microsoft is sending. It's pretty clear. But Restream can take that video that's coming in and then it can do some layouts. So if you want to overlay your company logo and titles, then it's going to allow you to do that. In the future, though, that's all going to be part of, of what Microsoft are going to do with this, right? They're going to allow a single combined experience in the future that's going to make it a lot easier. Um, so if your marketing people say, right, we're going to get a LinkedIn Live, or they're going to do a Teams webinar, or they're going to use this to send out to YouTube, Facebook, or wherever, then the way that they manage what's seen on screen, it'll be the same across all of those platforms. So really, part of that, like, why should I use it is, well, using that platform that you're going to end up using in the future as well. Um, it's going to make a lot more sense for you to start standardizing on this now rather than using all those sporadic platforms. And it's just a massive, massive benefit to being able to use all of your team stuff, your team's certified headsets. You know, if you're using those rather than uh, people are, are just trying to use random mics that they've got, then you, you guarantee quality. You, you've got a big problem with live streaming platforms, and that is they don't have any of that advanced background noise cancellation. For the Practical 365 podcast, we switched from the other platforms because the background noise cancellation, well, it stopped me having to cut out my co-host Paul's beeps and dings and tapping on the keyboards. All of that stuff, it's just taking care for you in Teams. The background replacement, taking care for you. Uh, making better meetings, better uh, quality video, all taking care of you. What you're getting with StreamYard, and those are the solutions, they're just taking like a web RTC stream, they're just taking the camera and audio and plonking it into their service and then putting it out. So there's those advantages and the future sort of state to look at. But there is this fact that today it's one person at a time or a screen share. Personally, I think that's a massive improvement in terms of usability and ease of use compared to something like that NDI out feature. Because if I was going to show someone like our marketing team, the NDI feature, I just know that they, they they wouldn't use it unless it was a big event and someone was going to manage it. Uh, with this, you saw we span it up in moments. We added the app to the meeting, we pasted it in the URL, and then we pressed go. And we're live on YouTube. You don't get easier than that. So it's a really great feature. I encourage you to use it now. Easy to enable and really easy to get started with. So read more about this on the blog. And of course, we'll round up, I think, in a week or so's time, the differences between this and the other streaming technologies inside Microsoft 365 and Teams, so you can pick which one's right for you.